49 degrees in here. 38 is downstairs. Outside is actual 32 right now. And it's snowing. And this is my heater system, plus the lights. I've, I've gotten a lot of progress on drywall. I'm still working. I still have some left to do over there. And I really love the snow. Look at that view out the window. Got my jet skis tarped up over there. And then out the bedroom window in the back. Oh, that's so pretty. It's nice. It's a picture window. I forget what these types of windows are called because it's, you know, if you have your bed here and then this is over the bed. I forget. Transom window? Yeah, we'll go with that transom window. It's just uh, an excellent view. So here's where I am with the drywall. I have two more rows left to do in the living room, kitchen area. And I think I'll have enough. I need like... Eh, no, I need like six sheets. We're like five and a quarter, but I have five. So that's not enough. I need to get another sheet. Plus to cover up this access hole, which I'm gonna just drywall over once it once I'm done insulating. So, okay, let me start over. I'm putting 24 inches of blown in fiberglass insulation in the attic. Um, John's Mansville Attic Cat, I think it's called, or something like that. And that'll go over top of the drywall. Now, in some cases you could do like a netting, but since I'm doing 24 inches of insulation and they're 24 inch gaps, that's a bit much for the netting to support. And if I do the drywall first, then I don't have to buy and install netting. Also, it seems really um, critical to be able to install support blocks as needed. Like on that corner, I actually need to install a support block. And if I had netting and insulation up, that would be a lot more difficult. So I'm, I'm I guess I can explain the airtight drywall bit here now. This is just a box, sort of like that. And that's all silicone caulked up. And it's insulated, and then I'm using uh, glue. Uh, drywall glue. To seal up the drywall to the box hole. So that creates an airtight box where none of the air that goes up through the box itself can leave. And I was doing some preliminary calculations and I may actually be able to achieve a passive house um, levels of efficiency and low heating load. Now, I, I'm not gonna go after the passive house certification because that's like $12,000, it's just stupid. But I can do it my own little passive house sign and put it next to the door. Like, woohoo! Yeah. Uh, this is how the light's going to be. These are the holes for the LED lights. And before I put the lights in, I'm going to insulate. They're IC rated lights. And I have one that's kind of mocked up in the ceiling. And, you know, I have a video on that and that's what it'll look like. It's not powered yet. I could power that and we'll see how it looks later. So, happy with that. And then, you know, temporary connections. I'm using these Wega. I'm not sure what they're called. Wago. Yes, Wago, these connectors. They're great. Super easy to connect and disconnect. Oop, I never explained what I was doing with this hole here. So this is so I can insulate the attic. And once I, you know, do everything except like the area around this box, I'm gonna build a dam around this hole, 24 inch dam, and then fill up all of the space around it and then that dam cavity I'm going to fill up with multiple layers of 
um, fat insulation. So if I ever really, really need to get into the attic, which I don't ever plan on, I can cut out this piece of drywall, pull down the fiberglass bats, and then access the attic as needed, which I you know, absolutely hope that I'll never have to do. Because there, there will be like hardly any access or any room up there to do anything. But there's nothing in there that's serviceable anyways. And I'm never going to have to fix for leaks or anything. So, awesome. Oh, did I explain what these baffles are for? I think I did. So you can see a gap up there. You can see a little styrofoam block. And this will... This does two things. First, it blocks any airflow from getting into the insulation low down, down near the edge. And it allows cold air to flow up along the ceiling, along the roof sheeting. So it's a cold roof system. And then the insulation is just gonna rest against that on the underside. And the baffle keeps the insulation from clogging up that. So I should never have any sort of ice dam issues ever, unlike our current house where you have to put up heat tape and run it like it's on right now. Just wasting energy trying to melt the ice that's forming on the edge of the roof. Because that diagonal member would go straight down to the outside and there'd be no room for insulation. This drywall is somewhat difficult to cut it's short bits with just a razor. So I use this to score a better line, a thicker line. And then snap and cut. And then commonly there's a bit here that's still sticking out. So I just shave that off with this also. I'll let you follow along with this sheet that I'm putting up. In that corner I have a six inch can light. And then here I'm gonna have two boxes for pendant lights. So follow along. <laughs> 